This is Joy in the Journey with your hosts, Sue Landis and Beth Davis. Stay tuned. It's time for Joy in the Journey. Hi, welcome to Joy in the Journey, and I'm glad you've turned in today. Actually, we're all glad you turned tuned in today. Turned in. Anyway, <laughs> tuned in today. Um, we are, uh, my name is Sue Landis, and we are here today just to um, share with you testimonies of real people that have gone through um, awful traumas, awful things that, that, you know, happens to everybody. We all have life, we all, or death or, that happens in our families. We all have maybe um, somebody you know that's on um, heroin or meth or, or maybe somebody that their children died or, you know, there's so many different things that um, in life that we experience today. But with Jesus Christ, Him helping us through these difficult times, we can have joy in the midst of trauma and, and joy in the midst of whatever mountain it is that we're facing. And so with that, I just want to go ahead and introduce you introduce you to the guests we have today on Joy in the Journey. With us is, as always, um, Beth home. Davis. <laughs> and we also have our guest, Randy, Yay. who's really, oh man, your testimony. We were talking a little bit um, before the program, and at first I'm like, I don't really know you. What are you going to share? And then when you started sharing, I'm like, oh, wow. Lord, I didn't know you got this. This woman's going to minister to some people mm -hmm. just by your testimony and things you've been through and you have a, you have a heart that wants to help mm -hmm. people and that's what God likes to use. So with that in mind, Randy, why don't you just go ahead and share some of um, where you've been, where you're going where, and what your heart is for people and, and just okay. share with us a little bit about who you are. All righty. Um, well, I guess I'll just start by giving you a little bit of my background mm -hmm. um, and then kind of, ex you know, that way you can see where I was and um, mm -hmm. where, what God's brought me through and kind okay. of what my vision is for the future, like with, you know, with the Lord. Um, mm -hmm. I, um, I grew up with my mother um, and she, I, I want to say this again, my, my parents did the very best of their, the very best that they could, you know, mm -hmm. at, right. that time, mm -hmm. at that time. Um, but I went through, you know, when I was younger, I went through a lot of um, different kinds of abuse. Um, that um, kind of just learned, I learned to really harden myself, um, you know, verbal, physical, sexual, you name it. There's a lot of different kinds of abuse that I had um, encountered when I was a kid. Um, and I learned to become very angry and I learned to embrace that mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. when I was younger. And wow. it was something that I used to basically just, it was like a defense mechanism right. I used to protect myself. Um, mm -hmm. And so instead of feeling, I basically just turned my feelings off. You know, I turned my feelings off and I turned them into rage. And I started doing that at a young, you know, fairly, fairly young age. Mm -hmm. um, right. I don't remember how old I was when I started drinking, but it was, it was very young. And it was something that I started doing on my own. It wasn't, um, it wasn't something that I was like, oh, you know, I was at a party and somebody mm -hmm. introduced me. It, mm -hmm. That wasn't the case at all. It was just you know, I made up my mind that I was going to drink. And, right. Maybe um, this will help type yeah. thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, you know, just self-medicating basically. Right. Um, you know, because I just was so angry and I felt so alone all the time. And, um, you know, I didn't have a relationship with my dad. My dad wasn't around. Um, it was basically just my mother and I. And then, um, and then she actually married when I was five. Um, and he was very abusive. Mm -hmm. Um, he was very abusive too, to, you know, to her, to me, to just everything. And, um, mm -hmm. so, um, anyways, we, um, I, like I said, I started drinking when I was young. I started getting pretty rebellious by 11, 12. Um, I started running away, running away for pretty decent lengths of time, mm -hmm. you know, running the streets. Mm -hmm. I was started going in and out of juvie. Um, by 12, I, you know, drinking wasn't really cutting it. So, um, so I decided, you know, I was going to learn, I was going to start smoking some weed. Mm -hmm. And again, that wasn't like I was at a party or anything. Mm -hmm. I was just, um, 
determined. I, yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, that's I'm exactly. Gonna find. <laughs> that's a very, very good, I, I've always been a very determined person. Thank God, <laughs> you know, that he uses that for the for, good right, now. Yes, right, right. But yes. before, um, you know, yeah, I would just kind of make up my mind, well, this is what I'm going to do, and mm -hmm. I would make that happen. Yeah. Um, and so at 12, you know, I started smoking weed, made up my mind one day I was going to do it, and I just, I went and found somebody to, you know, somebody mm -hmm. that was going to sell me some weed, and I started, you know. Well, then... Um, <laughs> Again, you know, I was still in and out of juvie, running away all the time, fighting a lot, um, you know, just getting in a lot of trouble. Um, and then at 14, I went into foster care. Um, uh, when I went into foster care, I went into a really, um, really deep depression at the time. Right. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, they took you away from your mother. Yeah. And, and honestly, you know, we, my mother and I didn't get along at mm -hmm. all, but mm -hmm. it was just, you know, I knew them, obviously. That was my family, and I right. lived with them. So mm -hmm. um, even if it wasn't a great situation you for us at the them. time. You still loved them. Yeah, of yes. course. still loved them and wanted to exactly. be with them. Um, yeah. So, you know, then to go into mm. foster care where you're with, you know, a bunch of people that you don't know. Oh and gosh. it was not um, was not your, you know, Susie Homemaker, you know, mm -hmm. picture-perfect type right. foster deal. Um, wow. You know, it ended up, you know, coming out. He, he had been messing with a bunch of the girls and stuff. Mm. The you know. person that adopted. Or the fo fostered the fo you. The fo yeah. yeah, the foster yeah. dad in that home. Um, and he, you know, had kind of started testing his waters a little bit with me. Mm -hmm. And then that mm -hmm. kind of started to stir that rage and stuff right. inside of me again. Um, so, Which is probably, wow. in that case, was probably a good, good. A yes. good thing. Yes. Yeah. And it, um, so I kind of started coming out of that depression that I was in. Because, mm -hmm. I, I mean, really, I was literally just sleeping. I would wow. go to school and I would sleep. That's wow. all I would do. I was so depressed. Wow. And then, um, you know, then I kind of started getting a little ticked off and kind of started mm -hmm. like stirring some of that stuff inside of me. And I made up my mind, well, this is not happening like this. Right. Um, so I ended up, um, ended up leaving that home, um, ended up leaving that home. And then um, I, like I said, I was in foster care. I left that home and then I was kind of in and out of juvie in and out of they finally sent me to treatment, um, mm -hmm. which was a residential treatment place. And honestly, that was a that I was not ready um, to, to give at that point in time. In right. Mm -hmm. But it gave me a lot of, it was, I mean, it was pretty hardcore, like in-depth treatment. You, you know, they had life skills, they had anger management that you mm -hmm. had to meet with a psychiatrist, you know, they, you right. know, dealt, you had to write out a life history. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you had to get your issues out and there was no set, there was not a set time. Okay. You're released in six months or mm -hmm. three months or mm -hmm. it was, you had to earn your release. You come here and you right. work the program or then you, you're going to sit. Right. So mm -hmm. until you were really ready to kind of start, they'd force you basically to mm -hmm. like, you know, you had to start mm -hmm. dealing with stuff. So um, my dad, when I went into foster care, you know, like I said, at that point, my dad and I, we didn't have a close relationship. I seen him, you know, maybe, you know, once a year or ever mm -hmm. so often, mm -hmm. you know, we weren't, we just really weren't close. Well, then I went into foster care and then he was in Florida at the time and he moved back to Ohio um, so he could start working to get custody of me. Um, mm. so when I got out of treatment, um, I got released to my dad's custody. Um, so, you know, you imagine a 16 year old rebellious teenager that, mm. you know, has never lived with dad and doesn't really have any respect or relationship with right. dad mm -hmm. and dad works third shift. <laughs> <laughs> freedom. So, wow. What you thought was freedom. <laughs> yeah. That did not yeah. make for a really good, um, wow. did it Wish make for really, you. no. So, you know, dad yeah. would leave at six o'clock at night. He wouldn't be back till six or seven in the morning. Um, so needless to say, I pretty much like started diving in pretty much head, you know, head first. Right. Um, and mm. at that time, you know, well, drinking and smoking weed wasn't, you know, enough. So by 16, I started diving into, you know, I started, I got introduced to Coke for the first time. Mm. Um, I started seeing this older guy that was like in his twenties that, um, you know, introduced me to meth. He was selling some meth at the time. Wow. And mm -hmm. so I just started really diving into like some harder, dr a lot harder drugs. Mm -hmm. You know, I was doing Coke, I was doing meth. I started popping ecstasy pills. I started taking acid, um, you know, you name it. I, at that time I was pretty much game for whatever in my right. life. And mm -hmm. was that pretty much to get like cover up the pain and the, I just, or just to live, you had to have that it was, to live. That was just pretty much how I functioned. I, um, you know, I would get up and I would go to school, but I, you know, I would party all night. I would get up. All I would do would just be throw my clothes on, brush my teeth and go to school. And I would sleep through school all day. And then, okay, well, school's out. So now it's time to get party ready. Party time. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was just how I lived. It just became mm -hmm. like, Your life. that was my lifestyle. That mm -hmm. was how I lived. That was how I functioned. Um, right. And, you know, looking back on it, you know, I was really just a very angry, hurt child, you know, mm -hmm. hurt kid. Right. And I didn't know how to deal with life. So... 
I just got high and partied to do it because, you know, it was, I, it was fun at the time. And, but really, um, you know, I was just so empty. Like I just felt so empty and I was so angry. Right. And so that was how I would function, you know. Um, but that's also why I would fight so much. You know, I was getting into fights a lot. You know, right. I, mm -hmm. you know, had pretty much a reputation of she's kind of crazy. And right. I would, you know, I would was fighting all the time at, at the drop of a dime. I would fight, you know, with right. somebody. If, they, if I'm out and about, we're at a party or something, and I feel like you looked at me wrong or you <laughs> looked at one of my friends wrong or, you know, you breathed Your history. wrong. You know, I was, <laughs> yeah. I just, and that was how it was like, that was how mm. I'd release all of that. Right. And we talk a little bit about mm -hmm. how hurting people hurt people oh, and yeah. how, you know, sometimes when somebody's lashing out at us, oh, we yeah. just don't understand where they're where mm -hmm. they're coming from. We just mm -hmm. think they're crazy or right. they're we just, just hateful or whatnot. Yeah. But really, there's an underlying mm -hmm. issue there because hurting people hurt, hurt people. people. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's, so it's very. I mean, it's it's very simple. Like people say that a lot, but I don't think people understand the depth of how true mm -hmm. that really is. Right. Um. So. Um, so anyways, you know, I um, went on like that and then I ended up um, at 16, you know, like I said, me and my dad didn't have much of a relationship. So I left my dad's, um, I'd only been there maybe six months. So I've been on my own since I was 16. I wow. left my dad's. Um, mm -hmm. At that time I was wow. kind of, um, I was about couch surfing. I was living out of a friend's trunk. I kept all mm -hmm. my stuff in her trunk. And, um, you know, so I just kind of started bouncing around and stuff. And um, I eventually ended up... Um, there was a family, you know, that had helped me, um, you know, some too. I ended up going back into treatment. Um, I got out, um, got thrown into an independent living program after treatment again, mm -hmm. got kicked out of there. Uh, at that point, I only had about three months left um, until a little, j just shy of three months until I turned 18. So, you know, they're kind of like, well, we don't really know what to do with you. You know, oh. you don't have parents anymore. You know, you've been to treatment. You know, there was just really nothing wow. more that they no could hope. do. Mm. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, no hope. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And at that point in time, mm. you know, God had, you know, he had dropped, you know, you know, several little nuggets, as I like to call them, to, you know, on me. And there was times where I kind of would think like, oh, you know, I need to do this or I need to do that. But I just, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. I was just pretty much set on this is how I'm living my life and this is what I'm doing and I don't right. need anybody else. And no. I, you know, I kind of had a, you know, chip on my shoulder type deal. Right. Um, and, you know, I, I had no relationship with my mother, you know, um, anymore. You know, there was just, I was pretty much on my own. Um, wow. That's can you just and, imagine God sitting up there going, Randy, I love you. <laughs> Randy, I love you. <laughs> and um, so I... Um, they put, they threw me in juvie. They thought, all right, well, there's nowhere else we can send you. We'll throw you in, throw you in juvie. Mm. When you turn 18, you're off papers and you're out on your own. Well, wow. the that's very sadder. My well, goodness. The little bit of accountability that I did have mm -hmm. was out the door. Wow. So I spiraled very, very hard, very fast. Um, you know, mm. I got out at 12:01 a.m. on my 18th birthday, and I, you know, I had a plan, and it wasn't a very good one. Mm -hmm. And um, so I. I spiraled very, very hard, um, and I got very, you know, I got really strung out. Um, ecstasy was probably my drug of choice. At, well, I shouldn't even say that. I pretty much did any, I, I you know, I was, I never, um, I made up my mind. I purposed in my own mind, I'm not going to smoke crack, and I'm not going to shoot heroin, mm -hmm. only because I knew that I had such an addictive personality. It didn't matter what I did. I wanted to do more of it. Right. And so I would go on these, like, week-long binges of, like, ecstasy binges, or, and then, I'm okay, well now I can't even roll anymore because there's no more serotonin like, you know, being released in my brain oh, wow. because I've just done it so much, you know, wow. and I'd be kind of, so then, all right, well now it's probably time to like go to sleep and like sleep it off for like a couple days. And then mm -hmm. I would, you know, all right, well now it's time to be back at it. So, well now maybe it's going to be a Coke binge this week. And it was just, it was just horrible. It was just a horrible dead end um, mm -hmm. that I was headed on. And it had gotten to the point where I started actually like falling out and having seizures. Oh my um, goodness. You know, it was just a really bad. So, you're were you working then? Did you have? Uh, I couldn't hold down a job, honestly. You know, I you know I did. I would rob a lot of people. Like, okay, I was wondering you know, how, you how you got, got your money. money. Yeah. yeah, and I knew like a lot. I knew all the drug dealers and stuff. You know, at the time, like you know, so I would you know, I'd hit a lot of licks. Like go, I'd rob you know people. Wow. I'd do all kinds of stuff. You know, to um, when I say rob people, I mean like I would usually rob like people for drugs and that mm -hmm. type of thing or okay. money like I didn't yeah. like go robbing houses I was never really like other than fighting I was never like hurt other people so much mm -hmm. I was very self-destructive mm -hmm. I you know um so I'm still you know this whole time all this rage and stuff is just building inside right. of me during all of this oh and I remember you know thinking at like about 18 
I got to get out of here and I got to get out of this life because if I don't, um, I'm going to die. Wow. You know, at that point, like I was having, you know, that's when I was having the seizures. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. You know, I put myself in situations to be around people and things. And, you know, and I remember literally thinking, you know, it was probably God you know, speaking to me. I didn't realize it at the time you're going to die if you, you don't, don't get out of this, you know? And hmm. so, but I still wasn't ready to surrender to him, even though I knew, you know, <laughs> and I would always tell people, well, you know, I'm a Christian. I'm just not a really good practicing Christian <laughs> because I knew, you know, that, that he, that Jesus died on the cross for my mm -hmm. sins, but I just mm -hmm. didn't really want any part, anything to do with it at maybe, that point Do you time. think you might've felt like he was going to let you down too? Um, somebody maybe else already has asked me that, you know, somebody else has asked me that. And I did go through a time where I was really angry and mm -hmm. I said, there is no God. And, mm -hmm. you know, so that really may have been the case. You know, I, I feel like I was very probably angry with him that, mm -hmm. you know, I had gone through the things that I had gone through. Um, right. But by then I was kind of over that. I just wasn't really ready to, to surrender, like with, to anything with him. So I took off, you know, I was mm -hmm. living in Worcester and then I took off and I went on the road. Um, you know, I met these people, they're these um, guys, they went, traveled around, they sold magazine subscriptions and, um, you know, they came up and they were spilling me one day and I was in the middle of a real extra awkward conversation that I didn't want to be in. And I was kind of to that point in my life where I got to get out of here, you know, and mm -hmm. he said, uh, he's spilling me. And I said, wait a second. I said, are you guys the guys that travel around and sell magazines? He said, yeah. I said, when are you leaving? He said, tomorrow. I said, I'm coming with you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I was ready to take off. And um, my brother at the time, my brother, he was already on another crew at the time. So I didn't end up going with those guys. I con contacted my brother and I jumped on crew So he was him. doing that too yeah. then? Okay. And, um, and that was real, you know, that was no that was no better. Um, you know, I was partying really hard. Now I had kind of stopped doing the harder, the harder drugs for the most part. Mm -hmm. I drank excessively mm. every single day, mm. smoked a lot of weed. Um, but I wasn't doing as much of the hard drugs at that time, you know, getting, getting out kind of helped mm -hmm. a little right. bit, but the problem, here's the thing, you know, a lot of times people think, Oh, I'm doing this. I got to move. Well, you take you with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can't carry yeah. it yourself. I you're, just you're with you. <laughs> so the problem was, you know, the problem was me and, mm -hmm. you know, inside of me, you know, was the issue. Right. So, right. um, you know, I took me with me and <laughs> I still had these issues. Um, maybe I wasn't using as excessively as I had been before, but right. Um, so I ended up, um, I ended up getting pregnant with my daughter, mm -hmm. um, and that settled me down for the most part. Um, in mm -hmm. the, in, in the aspect, um, you know, I stopped, obviously I stopped using, I stopped drinking because I was pregnant. Right. Um, and wow. there was times, you know, I would start reading my Bible and, mm -hmm. you know, just different things like that. But then I would, you know, I never got grounded in church and mm -hmm. I stopped. Well, I had my daughter and I, um, I basically transferred one addiction to the other. You know, mm -hmm. I, I had her, so I had to grow up a little bit. Um, right. And so, you know, okay, now I'm working, now I have a job, now I have a place, I have my daughter, that type of thing. Um, but I just basically turned that drug addiction into alcoholism. Um, mm -hmm. And I, so I just started drinking really mm -hmm. heavy. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I would drink, I would blackout drink. I would drink, you know, um, there'd be times, you know, I moved my, I moved my little brother in. So I would, um, put her, I'd put my daughter to bed. My brother would stay there to watch her because he was 16. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, okay, you know, I put her down at 10 o'clock. There'd be times I wouldn't come home till 6 a.m. And wow. I would just be out all night, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, in my head, I thought that I was a good mom because mm -hmm. well, I have my kid, I work, I take care of her. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I got into a pretty abusive relationship. Um, and um, we had been together for several years and it was uh, not a good situation. Uh, we were like oil and water. We, mm -hmm. you know, we brought the worst out of each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, um, you know, I mean, and it was, it had gotten, it had gotten pretty bad, you know? Um, and so, you know, I'm in this abusive relationship. I'm, you know, I'm drinking really heavy, you know, but in my mind, I'm like, you know, well, I have it together. You know, I, you know, work at that time I had gone and I'd gotten, uh, became an STNA and, you know, I'm like, well, I work in a nursing home. I take care of my kid. Mm -hmm. I have my car. I have my house. I, you know, I'm, I'm a good mom. You know, I got my life together. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Because all this time, you know, I was still so angry. I still, and I was fighting a lot. You know, the boyfriend and I fought a lot. Mm -hmm. um, we'd go out to the bars. We'd fight a lot at bars. You know, we just, mm -hmm. we'd fought. You know, there was just all this stuff, you know, going on. Mm -hmm. So, um, so anyways, you know, this, this whole time, there was several times, um, you know, God kept bringing in my path, you know, this church. Um, and I remember, you know, there was a guy that I knew that had, um, he was really wild and crazy when I went away, mm -hmm. you know, on the road. And then when I came back, I seen him at Kohl's one day and he said, Hey, you know, Randy, you need to come check out my church. And, 
you know, and I'm like looking like, mm. <laughs> but I remember he had this glow to him, you know, mm -hmm. and at the time I didn't understand it. Now right. I look back and I know that was like the Holy, now I know that was the Holy Spirit. You know, he had really had like a, a life, life exchange. exchange. Wow. And, yeah. you know, he, you know, that was really like God shining through him basically. That's cool. And, but I didn't know that at the time, but I know I specifically remember thinking you were kind of crazy. And if whatever's going on at that church mm -hmm. has to be legit because I know how you were. I and see that's change not, in you. Yeah, that is not the case <laughs> wow. anymore. That is so awesome. I specifically remember that, but I still wasn't ready. Right. Mm -hmm. And but you know, God kept kind of bringing this church into my path at the time. Um, so I um, eventually, you know, I would go. I started kind of. I call it date in the church. You know, mm. probably in about 2010. <laughs> I'd pop in, you know, and I'd you know hear some sermons here and there. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't ready at that time. Mm. You know, I was still drinking very very heavily. Mm -hmm. I was still living with my boyfriend. Um, you know, still in this just you know, really bad cycle. Um, and I remember, um, you know, like I said, sometimes I would start reading the Bible and stuff and then, but I would never get grounded in church. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I look back mm -hmm. on it. That's the problem. You know, I would start reading the word and I would be all pumped up. Yeah, I'm going to live yeah. for God. You know, this is what's going right. to happen. And then, you know, but I would never, I never, um, Fellowship, never grounded. probably. Yeah, I never got grounded in a church, so I never met new, you know, and yep. Yeah. And so I, that was always like the missing, you know, part. Well, um, I remember there was a time um, I, I really felt like I was at a fork in the road. I was at the time where, you know, God was kind of dealing with me and I was thinking like, oh, you know, maybe I need to do this, but I was still drinking some mm -hmm. and, but I was trying to like, I was trying to stop, you know? Right. Well, I had a friend, um, she was a very good friend of mine that I, you know, we used to hang out, we used to party and drink together all mm -hmm. the time. And um, she said, hey, you know, let's go to the bar. And I'm like, you know, let's just go do this. You know, uh -huh. my grandma's church had something going on. Let's take the kids to this. And she's like, you know, come on, I've been on vacation. And this, you know, this wasn't her fault. This is what we did. You right, know? right. It wasn't, you know, she's just trying Doing to get me she, to do what we normally what we did. Normally did right. yeah. But I literally remember feeling like I was at a fork in the road. And I'm like, oh, I really should just go to the church and wow. take the kids, you know. And I didn't. I got a bottle of tequila and I uh, drank it. And then I went to the bar, and the relationship that I was in at the time, the guy I was with, like mm -hmm. I said, we've been together for like three years. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of issues with his kid's mom, and there had been a lot of you know issues there. And her and I had a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, mind you, I've never dealt with any of my issues at this point in time mm -hmm. in my life, so I still have all of this balled up rage <laughs> yeah. that's mm -hmm. just inside of me, ready to explode. Mm -hmm. And um, there was, I went to the bar, you know, drank, went to the bar. Um, and she just so happened to be there. You know, the devil's really good at just manipulating and just placing things, yeah. you know. Right. And right. watch your loser um, cool today, yeah. you know. What can oh, I yeah. do to oh, yeah. Randy to and that's, stir her pot? That's exactly, <laughs> that's exactly it. And yeah. um, so she happened to be at the bar that night. And um, mm. like I said, I kind of had a reputation of being like fairly pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and she was not a big fighter. So I, um, she, you know, was trying to, you know, be real cute and stuff. And I got real mad and I was, you know, just feeling crazy at the time. And mm -hmm. so I poured my drink on her wow. and I was just thinking like, well, she knows I'm crazy. She's not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. But she turned around and, and when she touched me, she mugged me, you know, kind of, and I expected her to just kind of be like, Randy, really? Well, she didn't. Um, she, you know, she just kind of pushed me away with mm -hmm. good reason. I just poured right. my drink on her. <laughs> um, right. But I snapped. You I lost, lo it. I mean, I lost it. And it was not... It was not something that I had premeditated. Mm -hmm. I honestly didn't mm -hmm. even expect her to respond. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I hit her. And when I hit her, I still had that cup in my hand. And oh. I didn't even realize it that day. Um, wow. And I just kept hitting her. I was just in this rage. Wow. And I just kept hitting her until finally somebody grabbed me. They, wow. I mean, I think everybody else was in shock, too. Right. Wow. Somebody grabbed me, like, Randy, stop. You know, and I, and I realized, like, well, she's not even fighting back. So I stopped. And I did not even realize that night how bad she was hurt wow. um, until I got a phone call the next day, like, what did you do? Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, what are you talking about? You know, oh, Ashley got 50 some stitches in her face and, wow. you know, your mm. cops are looking for you. And wow. I was just like, oh, my gosh. And wow. I just remember thinking, like, I was just, it was like everything just came crashing down around mm -hmm. me. And, mm -hmm. you know, when I seen, like, the pictures of her and stuff, you know, I Whoa. was just devastated. I couldn't believe that. Wow. I had done that to somebody right. and so I remember I um you know I just made up my mind like I do not want to live like this anymore mm -hmm. and so I was um I was at my house and I remember I was in my in my living room and I you know just hit hit my knees and I just I just started praying I literally just hit my knees wow. and I just started praying and I just started telling God you know oh, I'm God. so sorry 
I don't know how I got to where I am. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I became this person that I am, but I don't want to be this person mm -hmm. anymore. I don't know how I could do that to somebody, and I need you to fix me. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, I am a hot mess, and I need Aww. you to do something and something to fix me. And um, mm -hmm. so I just started really praying and just started talking to him and stuff. And um, I was facing prison. You know, mm -hmm. I had caught a felonious assault. I became, mm -hmm. I caught, you know, an F2. That's what they charge people with when they shoot people or stab people. And, you know, normally that carries quite a bit of prison time. Right. Um, so, you know, now I'm like on the verge of like losing my kid. I'm mm -hmm. thinking, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I might go to prison. You know, I'm about to lose my life. And um, wow. so I... Um, I just really turned my life over to him and then made up my mind, you know, okay, I'm going to start seeking him. And um, I did. Mm -hmm. And then um, I just started really like, you know, I was reading. I started getting grounded in church. I got involved at the church if they had food pantry, whatever they had going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. um, are we running out of time? No. I, oh. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> we have to do a part two, but yeah. uh, oh, I mean, you're good. sorry. that's no, okay. No, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. <laughs> you be sorry for it, girl. <laughs> Um, so anyways, you know, we just, um, I just really started digging into the church and I just made up my mind, this is what I'm going to do. Mm. Um, so that determined person you are. Oh yeah. 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 That was God started using that determination. Right. For good. Right. And so I just, you know, I got in Bible studies, I got in spiritual counseling mm -hmm. I got, you know, I started doing all these things, you know, pretty much whatever I could get involved in there. You know, I did, wow. if there was something mm -hmm. going on at the church, I was there mm -hmm. and it's been a long, you know, it's been a long road, a long mm -hmm. journey, but God's really, um, been really working and stuff, you know, mm -hmm, in me, mm -hmm. it has really, you know, like I, I'm, you know, very happy to say, you know, I, like I said, I struggled with addiction for a long time, but God delivered me of that. Yeah. You know, Thank I've you not know. had, I've not smoked a cigarette. I've not had a drink. I've not picked up a drug or anything. You wow. know, I've been clean since 2012. So, awesome. That's amazing. Um, can you, can you just like for the last couple minutes of the program here, could you just talk to somebody out there that maybe where you've been and the hope that you've received through that relationship mm -hmm. with Christ mm -hmm. Jesus when you finally hit bottom and said, Lord, right. I need some help. Right. Can you just talk to somebody out there? Yeah. That um, I would probably just say that um, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how low you feel at that point. Right. Um, right. Because I, I felt very low at that point. I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I thought I had it together. And this world, the world that I thought that I had all together just came crashing down around me. Mm -hmm. And you know, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you're facing. It, none of that matters. Right. But if you really choose, make up your mind, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to live like this anymore. And you really start seeking out a relationship with right. the Lord. <laughs> he will bring you through that. Amen. I, I can tell you that because that's happened to me. You know, I, I, I know that for, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a drug addiction, whether it's family issues, divorce, you know, death, you know, and all those things are horrible. And I totally grasp that there's a lot of people that have gone through a lot of things and and you have a right to be upset about those things, mm -hmm. but God can heal you. That's right. You know, there was a lot of things yes. um, that I had gone through, and there's still healing taking place, you know, and things that I have to deal with. God's healing, you know, over time, He's revealing to me and healing me, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it doesn't matter what you're going through, you don't have to stay there. You know, you don't That's have to right. stay in that same, you know, just awful cycle, and, you know, That's you right. don't have to stay in that uh, misery, you know that there is, there is a God that loves you, mm -hmm. that there are people that would welcome you lovingly. You know, I know at least, you know, at our church, they're very loving and welcoming. I know there's others too. Um, you know, get rooted, get planted, you know, make up your mind. I don't want to do this anymore. Find a church, you know, and get rooted in it and start getting involved. Because right. if you do that, I'm telling that's you, good. the way God transforms your life will be amazing. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's probably like the best advice, you know, I have to give as far as any, you know, anything like that goes. But um just, yeah. just be encouraged and just know that there's people that have been there and yeah. that God can and will bring you through it yeah. if you take that first step. That's right. And I'm sure there's many times you maybe hit bottom still oh, and yeah. still had things that went through, <laughs> but through God and through Jesus Christ and a relationship with the Holy Spirit, He's brought you to this point in time where you're ministering to others. And we just thank you for tuning in today. What an awesome testimony that Randy yeah. shared with, with us and, and how the power of Jesus Christ can set us free from any addiction, any problem we have. So. Just continue to believe in Jesus, and we hope you'll catch the show next week. And thanks for tuning in to Join the Journey.